Hey everybody, looks like we made it to yet another Wednesday. It's so good to see you. I hope you're all having a great week. So right now I have the sound off and uh, so we have Roy. How you doing Roy? Good to see you. Color Graphics and Blue, good to see you. So glad you both can make it. So let me know how the sound is. You guys are my ears and my eyes right now. Uh, but um, I don't know how the sound is, but let me know uh, what it sounds like. So as you can see, here is, hey, what's up there, Mr. Geekman? How you feeling today? Always good to see you. So I'm going to do a test. I have three cameras going today. So we have this camera here. Let's see, right here. Uh, let me just put my sound off here. And so basically camera one and then we have camera two and then camera three so let me know uh, so sound is fine on all three hey what's up there mr. John total pain enterprise is always great to see you uh, so going through the different cameras is there uh, any break in the sound or anything like that because sometimes that does happen but I just wanted to do a little bit of a little bit of upgrade on the live stream. I mean, I had this capability, but now I'm just taking it to that next level. Hey, Mr. Leahy, good to see you, sir. Always a pleasure. So glad you can make it. Thank you so much for coming by, everybody. You guys are all great. So I have the three cameras. We'll see how it goes. Um, Oh, I see. So the vid is not showing on Facebook link. Oh, okay. So that's interesting. So let me see. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and quick hit that. Um, no, I think it is, John. So uh, the Facebook link. Oh, your YouTube. I uh, Yeah, the YouTube, John, is probably too new. So that I understand that. Thanks for the heads up on that, sir. So that's cool. So... Uh, so I have this and we'll just kill that and we have the nameless subscriber that's really cool and Rick how you doing Rick good to see you No, you're on time uh, three minutes uh, we always give like a, at least a 10 minute grace period <laughs> unlike corporate America they'll ride your butt until they fire you because you're 30 minutes 30 30 seconds late you know because they can so uh, but that's a whole nother rant, which I'm not going to get into corporate America, that's for sure. Uh, so Facebook is fine, so that's good. So on YouTube, thanks for that, John. So here we are on part, uh, what are we on? Part four. So basically what I wanted to talk about early going, and I know my, my uh, YouTube, the uh, live streams are just about technique. But I heard something uh, for one of our our people, you know, who use the India ink and the paper and everything. They're doing portraits in black and white. And of course, I'm not going to name anybody. But they said that they wanted to pretty much stop airbrushing because someone told them that they should stop airbrushing, that they weren't any good, and uh, just going along that lines. And uh, I didn't say anything about the post because I didn't want to, uh, I want everyone else to, you know, say their piece. But no matter what level we're at, we're always going to have, hey Raul, how you doing? We're always going to have haters. We're always going to have people, for lack of a better word, haters. But we're always going to have people who really just are going to attack you for no reason and it's more about them than it is about you or what you're doing and so definitely know that the only validation that we need to uh, paint is the fact that we enjoy it and we love it and we want to get better and believe me there's enough people that are going to go ahead and criticize you and attack you I just a quick story um, I remember when I was in junior high school and I was about to apply to the high school of art and design I'm thinking I'm like 14 years old I'm in junior high school and I told one of the teachers like an English teacher or something 
And I said to him, I'd like to apply. He's like, really, let me show you your work. He says, you're an artist. Yeah, it's like, yeah, I've been drawing since I was a little kid. And I went the next day and showed him some drawings, some pencil drawings. Colette, how are you? And, and I remember showing my work, being very proud. He goes to me, I thought you said you could draw. And I just felt the wind leave my sails, you know, and all of a sudden, you know, I was thinking, oh my God, this guy is, he, he's tearing me apart. Maybe I'm not good. Maybe, maybe I shouldn't apply to the high school of art and design. And, uh, but you know, I just said to myself as a kid, I'm going to go ahead and apply because I love it so much. And hopefully other people will think that I'm good enough to get into the high school of art and design in New York City. And I did get into the High School of Art and Design in New York City. And, you know, and I did work hard. And, and along the way, I had a lot of people tell me, you should give this up. Evidently, you're not making money. Uh, you're like a worthless member of society. I mean, I had that kind of criticism throughout my, my life with art. So if that person out there is listening and they feel like they want to give up it's not original everyone is going to get attacked for something they love and the question that you have to have or any of us have to have is how much do we love it we do it because we love it and we don't need it's nice to have validation and people say yeah we're good and yes keep going and but the real validation has to be in here and you don't want anyone or anything to discourage you and stop doing it. Always remember why you started in the first place and you're painting or drawing for yourself, for you, whoever it is. Uh, I paint for myself ultimately and that's how you have to feel about it. You have to just say no matter if the whole world decided that Tim sucked and he should never paint I'm still gonna paint even if I have to do it secretly I would do it secretly like if everyone hated it and they were just like I hate this you know and they had to talk about it I still would do it secretly uh, if I had to but that's the whole thing you know remember why you're doing it have a good time don't let anyone uh, cloud that because when people are giving really mean criticism they're just clouding what you already know of why you do it how much you love it how exciting it is so I don't care if you are the first day you picked up an airbrush or you've been doing it 40 years we're gonna get attacked and just know it's coming and the happier you are the quicker you're gonna get attacked uh, so Keep fighting, keep plugging, keep keep pushing yourself, keep hanging around with like-minded people, and and always remember you are painting just for yourself, and that's the only person you're painting for. And uh, you know, if you're religious, perhaps you're painting for God, but that would be the only two people you would possibly be painting for. Uh, there would be no one else that you could be painting for. If they want to jump on the bandwagon, that's wonderful. And that's fantastic. Let them jump on the bandwagon more the merrier. And yes, I love my nice comments. I love when people say nice things about my art. It boosts me. It makes me excited. It, it uh, gives me validation. And those are all good things. But... I always remind myself that I don't need it to continue and neither do you guys. When you guys are here, I'm going to give you 110% encouragement. So is everyone here. They're going to give you 110% encouragement. And that's why I love about this Ink Flingers community. It's like-minded people who really want to uh, not only be better themselves, but make other people better. And that's the kind of community I want to have. And uh, so to me that is, is really what I wanted to say to begin this uh, live stream. And oh, so uh, 
Roy says you have to be able to take criticism right and a lot of times when you have that real horrible criticism it could be you have to realize that you know it could be someone who is lacking someone who is in a way envious of you uh, so many people and it's so sad haven't found what they loved or maybe they're not uh, maybe they're scared to go ahead and attack that thing that they love doing because they don't want people to say that they're not perfect well we're, no one's going to be perfect so just have fun and uh, and try not to let the uh, negative criticism I don't care who it's from it could be the closest person in the world to you a lot of times it'll come from the people really close to you get ready for that too and just you know if if you guard yourself for an attack of criticism like that so and prepare yourself then when it does happen you're going to be, be much better and stronger to deflect that and much uh, and to keep that confidence and don't let it just don't let it affect you for one second and if you need to hang out or you know instant message people or call people up and say hey I'm feeling really down about about that or what this person said what's gonna happen is those like-minded people are gonna tell you how ridiculous they are and you know how much they admire you and and they're gonna be coming from the heart and that's what we have to do in any of the airbrush communities for that matter or in life right so that's my soapbox and I hope this gets to that person who was talking about it and how much I enjoy their work and how much their comments and uh, you know their camaraderie has meant to me and you know this little community so uh, just know that and most likely you'll get this message but that comes from the heart and it comes from 100% honesty but just know and take comfort that Criticism is not just attack to you. Every one of us is going to get it eventually, without exception. And sometimes the more advanced you get, the stronger the criticism and the more angry it is. Uh, so let's all encourage each other. Let's let's uh, fight to keep those keep that flame going, and you know, fan the flame of inspiration of why you started in the very beginning and oh thank you yes uh, Steve uh, thank you so much uh, Steve says he 100% agrees and Steve knows he's been in the business for a long time or in the life I would say and so Steve knows you know even when you get to an advanced point like Mr. Leahy I'm sure some people say some really stupid things to him and he has to be like oh my god I can't let this uh, get under my skin and uh, and that's that's when and you can tell that he has fought that over the years because look how amazing he is and look how advanced he is and he didn't let anything stop him and no matter what level you are we're gonna get it so let's go ahead and paint and let's see and let's see over here yes mr. Steve says let's go paint some stuff <laughs> that's pretty cool so let's go to this one over here and all right so let's see what we have so right now what I did was I actually masked off just a hand because I've been ignoring the hand so I'm kind of guilty of like approach avoidance in a sense and that happens you know sometimes you you know you don't want to go ahead and do it because it's really complicated so I kind of waited a little bit so now I'm gonna attack it and see if we can get this uh, get this hand pretty much caught up to the rest of, of this portrait yes uh, Rick says there's gonna be negativity uh, on every subject on the internet so true so very true and let's go ahead and see if we can 
uh, go ahead and I'll pull up my reference. You guys won't see it on Pure Ref because of this program, but I'm going to go ahead and pull her up as soon as I find her. There she is. Okay, and I have the picture there so you can see what I'm talking about and the reference and everything like that. Okay, so now we're going to work on her hand and I'm going to put the light mixture in my airbrush and that's the uh, light sepia mixture and I'm going to put that in my extreme patriot arrow which you see right here and I'm going to do it away from the artwork as Mr. Steve Leahy says what could go wrong right <laughs> I, I love Steve uh, Leahy's live streams on Monday night. If you want positivity and you want to see uh, somebody who's not afraid to uh, give away great technique, definitely check out Steve Leahy's live streams. And those live streams are on Monday nights at 6 o'clock, 6 to 8 o'clock. Sometimes he even goes over. And that's really fantastic. Uh, so it's on his Facebook channel, Steve Leahy. Uh, every Monday 6 p.m. Eastern Time so very fantastic stuff so definitely learned a lot from him I learned about magnets from Mr. Leahy I fought it all the way so eventually you like can't beat them join them so Mr. Leahy is responsible for me using these magnets and you hearing all this tapping you know <laughs> hey Mickey how's it going uh, so, uh, Mickey says, uh, or Mikey, uh, says, hi everybody, glad I caught, yes, always great. I'm seeing Mr. Dredge's artwork on Instagram, and oh my god, that stuff is like kicking butt all over the place. It's just really fantastic. Uh, Mr. Dredge, if you could put down your... Uh, Instagram name I would really love that just type it in the comments so everyone else could see the great stuff you're doing I'm really enjoying watching it uh, all the time so definitely put that uh, put your ID in Instagram for me just good 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 stuff you know nameless subscriber hate doing hands and faces something I always struggle with yeah you know that approach avoidance is going to get us but you stick with it and you know you're gonna kick butt I have faith in you just stick with it a lot of times when we have our weaknesses what we can do is decide to make those weaknesses our strengths and uh, we definitely can do it as in the water boy you can do it you know Oh, yeah, well, you will when, you, when you're ready. You will transfer over to the uh, Mr. Dredge. You will transfer over when you're ready. Remember, when the student is uh, ready, the teacher will appear. So don't worry, in time. You're going to enjoy airbrush, Mr. Dredge. I mean, you really are. Your work is, would really just, your knowledge will really take you to a next level in airbrush very quickly. Um, let's see here so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to I have the light mixture and I have my extreme Patriot arrow and let's see if I can make this bigger push this down there we go okay oh so you see I have to see when you have you know your you know you're masking you want to make sure that you put the magnets real close to the edge and this way you won't have any kind of billowing up and that billowing is going to be really annoying because you're going to have overspray right underneath it and sometimes you'll have a real hard edge so i have the microphone real close to me so you all can hear me and i'm just trying to do better with the live streams trying to get technically better I just got to put a little more effort in, that's all. And Yeah, oh yeah, Blue's been doing airbrushing now. She's using the, uh, the inks and she's doing so well. So thank you so much for trying my inks, Blue. And you, 
I think you're a natural with the airbrush, so. And I think you're gonna find that the more you work, you're just gonna excel. So you see, I have the light mixture. I'm not going crazy. I'm just building this up super slow. And I have this, uh, what's really great is I have the, uh, the masking all around so I'm going to maintain a beautiful hard edge and I'm just going to keep moving around because you know I just want to basically just start to map out everything I'm going to lower my air pressure I may go into the medium mixture pretty soon, but we're going to take our time. Yes, and you know, I think, I think you're going to be pleasantly surprised. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my Extreme Patriot 105, as you can see here, and I'm going to put some of the uh, medium mixture in. Let's make this happen. So here, this may get messy. I don't have this, I don't have the medium mixture actually in the uh, bottles yet. What are you waiting for, Tim, right? Exactly. So, let me get my trusty eyedropper. And I'll mix that up first. Make sure no bug got in there. So, I want to test this out before I put it near my painting. So, we're just going to test out the spray, make sure the airbrush, the needle is all the way forward. So many different disasters could happen. So, we're looking good. We're ret go. And let's come back to. Nope, we don't want to see me. We want to see the artwork. Okay, cool. Patrick, how's it going? Viva Montreal! All right, we got Canada in the house. Great to see you. Always a pleasure, Mr. Mr. Patrick. Thank you so much for hanging out, you know? Love my Canada folk. You guys are the coolest. I really... You, Canada people have not disappointed me. And I often think what it would be like to visit soon. And that's what I want to do. I definitely want to visit soon. So let's go ahead and get this dark over here. One second rule, guys. Slow that air pressure a little bit since it's so thin. We can do that. Yeah, you do. Definitely love Canada. And but the people seem really cool. I have to say. And Rome isn't built in a day, so we're just going to very slowly build up these values. I don't care if we have to do a part 20. I'm just never going to speed it up. You know, there will be no wine before it's time. Am I right? Just keep that one second rule going. Look at my angles. In no hurry.
Oh yeah, the Adams Family was a lot of fun. Are we talking the newer version, the newer movie, or the classic series of the Adams Family? Just like hair, I think the trick with complication, uh, areas of complicated elements, I think it's just to stick with it, to be tenacious, and we'll get through it. And we're just going to stay positive. We're going to stay positive no matter what. Yeah, the classic one was so great, wasn't it? You know, I think it was only one, two seasons, I think. Right? It really wasn't much. I guess I didn't realize how big the show was until it went into syndication. But during that time, wasn't there a whole monster thing happening? There was the, the song, The Monster Mash. Vincent Price was big. So like monsters and ghouls and vampire was very, very popular then. So it's kind of interesting how it didn't do more than one season. Maybe it was something like, you know, problems with contracts or something. Because, you know, just on those merit in the time period, why didn't that be more, more successful? gonna switch really quick back to my light mixture and get sort of because this is definitely not that light so I'm just gonna dust over with the light mixture oh the new Adams family coming with Catherine Sater Jones Wow So with this light mixture, it's very, very light. But what it enables you is to give some real subtle tones. And don't, you know, don't use the light of the paper if it's too light. And then you would just come in and just start dusting as we are here. Lower that air pressure a little bit. Seeing some shadows here very lightly so with this light mixture since it's a very watery mixture you got to make sure that you don't uh, oversaturate with the water because it will beat up and I'm using Bristol which I usually don't use and so that alone is uh, something See that? You got to be careful of this uh, light mixture. Charcoal. Charcoal is fun. I just don't like the fact that it makes my hands all messy. Uh, never been a fan of anything that made my hands messy. I know an artist who doesn't like to get his hands dirty is kind of funny. And even lower that air pressure even more so the more watered down or diluted your paint or ink is you can find that you can lower that air pressure significantly and 
that's pretty cool so there's always advantages and disadvantages to everything and yeah I was just talking to uh, somebody today about uh, charcoal and it's a it's a very freeing medium but you know it end, ends up everywhere and I hate that you know on your hands on the table on your model you know it's everywhere it's like wants to take over the planet okay maybe we can start erasing so let's erase with a least uh, aggressive eraser at first and then work our way up to like the most aggressive eraser that ever lived so I think I just stabbed myself with a needle that was in but I think I'm okay all right we're good No, uh, definitely not. So the inks that you do purchase don't need to be reduced at all. They come ready to go. But I am coming out with something interesting, which I will be coming out uh, with the ink mixtures. I am coming out with something for tight detail, even tighter detail. So stay tuned for that, okay? Because that's going to be a lot of fun. Definitely stay tuned for that. I know I have all these things around the corner, but I just want to make sure they're perfected. So uh, when you all use them, you're not going to have any issues. I dealt with the issues first. So I'm not coming out with a beta version. I'm going to be doing all the testing rather than you guys and girls tell me this. What's going on with this? This is horrible. And then fixing it. I think that would be definitely don't want to cause those kinds of problems. So I'll do the beta testing. And I will beautify her hands down the line. Right now we're just mapping out. Cool, by Tim Burton. I saw a retrospective exhibit. I mean, he's not like end career or anything, late career, but I seen a retrospective exhibit back in 2007 of Tim Burton at the Metro, uh, no, at the Museum of Modern Art. And uh, his thought processes are downright scary. Uh, the way he comes out with all these things. I mean, were you able to see his sketchbooks and the ideas and how like Beetlejuice started and all this other stuff and really it's just extraordinary his mind right so that was really cool now as far as like artistic you know like do I think he was a great draftsman no but definitely a great mind and that's why he does those movies and everything so really fantastic Yeah, Tim Burton is really great. Great, great, great. Interesting. I don't know if he did. Uh, the funny thing is, if he was at Disney, he wouldn't have fit. Because uh, at Disney, you pretty much have to do their own... You have to do their thing the way they want it, Steve, as you know. And I don't think he would have fit for long if he did. I don't remember reading that he was at Disney. Uh, yeah, his, his, and also the kind of macabre, kind of darkness stuff he does. That's pretty funny, you know. Uh, but yeah, that would be interesting if anyone could Google and see if he ever worked at Disney. I was recruited twice to work at Disney. Actually, three times uh, because I was... Uh, they wanted me to do the portraits in Disney Village. But being young and idealistic and youth is wasted on the young, I turned them down several times. Wouldn't do that in, you know, in retrospect, I wouldn't do that. Because 
if nothing else, it's a place to meet people. And that would have been far better than working at a camera store. Although I did learn a lot at the camera store. Wow, that would be cool if he did. Oh, he was an apprentice at Disney. Yes, that's the exact program that I was going to. And I think this is in 1992 or 93. And they wanted to pay me like $10 an hour. And I was making like $12 an hour selling cameras. And being young, I was like, you know, I went to art school. I don't need this. And blah 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 and I was like I'm not gonna you know prostitute my art and work for that mouse and everything like that and um, yeah and so stupid we are dumb when we're young aren't we and oh cool so uh, so so mr. dredge said he was an apprentice which was great and yeah because I lived in Orlando so that's the backstory. I was living in Orlando at the time. And so I would meet a lot of people. Uh, I knew one of the execs at Disney and she asked me to, if I could, uh, actually she didn't ask. I, I left my sketchbook at her house and she shown it to one of the people in the uh, animation department and then that's when all that stuff happened. and black cauldron oh that sounds interesting see that doesn't sound like a children's story <laughs> yeah I can't imagine Tim Burton lasting too long at Disney no way they were very strict and uh, artistic expression is not their strong suit when they're asking from their animators So I would have been doing like the background cells, you know, and, you know, stuff like that. One of the reasons was, and I would go to Disney Village, you know, that was the place I would hang out as a young guy, you know, take dates and stuff like that. And we'd go there and Disney Village and Disney, they would sell the cells, the backgrounds that people were, you know, that people like me would have done as an, as a beginning at Disney and they were selling them for like a thousand thousands of dollars and I'm like wait a minute you're gonna get pay me ten dollars an hour and I'm going to make and you're gonna make thousands of dollars on that and I was like but being young I wasn't seeing the big picture we only learn that as we get older I'm sure everyone here feels like if you knew what you knew now at 17, would you feel that you would be dangerous? Uh, let's hear some of the thoughts out there. If you knew what you knew now at 17, what do you think would be different uh, as far as how you handle things at 17? What would be some of the changes that you definitely would, uh, you know, definitely would see if you had the knowledge of today interesting here I do see a little bit of light coming up here let's start with the least aggressive eraser and like I said this hand is loosely done it's not perfect but I'm not gonna bring the hand ahead of everything else I'm just gonna bring the hands up to speed with everything else There, Mr. Kennedy, how you doing today? Good to see you, sir. It's 
So how is that new studio coming out? Mr. Kennedy is building a new studio and, uh, and a lounge and everything like that. So that must be really interesting. Uh, you know, definitely something that I could never do. Uh, I'm not good at that stuff. I know my limitations. I'm terrible at that stuff. If I had to build my own place, I would be living in a tent. That would be crooked. So I admire that, sir. I admire that you're able to do that. And I'll get more specific as I go, as you can see. I'm painting the individual fingernails. The cute hands. One second rule in effect at all times. And I promise I'm going to make her hands prettier. You know, just give me time. Wow, wiring. Oh boy. Make sure you run that uh, wiring for your internet. That's the most important. Are you going to hardwire your computer as opposed to uh, wireless? That's always the best. If you do that, you're really going to be happy because you're going to have, you will have your hiccups here and there with the internet even hardwired to your modem, from your modem to your computer, but you'll have far less interruptions and uh, hiccups, so I definitely recommend that. That's the one thing I would be able to do. Yes, I heard about all that stuff. The construction stuff is, is still very high priced in comparison. And, and I, I guess it's just a, I guess supply chain, right? It's just, they're having trouble getting it from the manufacturers and then the distributors and then the retailers. It's just a mess. And uh, with the way things are going in the news with COVID-19, I don't see things really resolving soon. See a little beating up so I can lower my air pressure a little bit. The great thing about the Extreme Patriot Arrows that I customize, this is the 105, they both have this pack valve. Uh, I have this uh, Mac valve, but I never use it anymore. I always go with the pack valve, precision air control. So I can lower that. And you wanna lower it while you're holding the air down, right? So you don't wanna just lower it and then test it. Just lower it while you're holding the air down. And that will tell you exactly where you wanna be. So I put the compressor at 25, set it and forget it, don't think about it ever again, and just adjust that to pack valve. So those of you out there who have any questions, if, you do, if you're working similarly to me, you won't ever need anything higher than 25. Now if you're working in, let's say, you know, acrylic or something like that, you're working straight out of the bottle. I still think you can get away with 25, but you know, you might have to adjust it at that point. But if you're working thin like me, uh, setting and forgetting at 25, that would be just fine. So still looking at the big shapes here, this reflected light here is pretty close in value. So I'm just going to bring that in and just. I'll get more specific as I go. Wow, stoves. Wow, all that stuff. Oh my God. Don't feel bad. I had to put together my uh, weight bench. It took me a weekend. And I didn't know I knew all those curse words. And uh, I remember I put the whole thing back and 
I forgot to do one thing first, so I had to take the whole thing apart. And I was upset, you know, yelling and screaming. So, you know, my contractor days are definitely behind me. So if I can ever... So when I see people who build stuff like you guys, I'm like, wow, that's just amazing. My hat's off to you. Speaking of hats, this is my customized Extreme Patriot. No, this is the... Uh, yeah, this, let's see if we look at the hat I have on today. So this one right here is my logo and you can see it has the customized Extreme Patriot arrow on the logo. And some people have said, Tim, I don't like the fact that uh, Ink Flinger spells if, but I think if is a really cool thing. It's kind of, it's provocative, it's thought provoking, uh, you know, so I kind of like that it has if and of course the eagle, you know, and Ink Flingers. So this is, so this is selling right now at $14.99 if you're interested. I would love to make one for you. And now I'm doing something really cool and I'm actually putting a name on the side. So I learned how to do that. So I'm learning how to customize stuff like that and you know, take everything to the next level, including my art and this channel and uh, you know, merchandise like that. Great way to support Ink Flingers. Great way to help me to always upgrade and make sure that you know, I'm able to uh, do these live streams every Wednesday night without exception. Uh, always, you know, and all that stuff costs money and everything like that. I'm happy to do it, but sometimes it's kind of a hardship. So if you, that's a great way to, you know, support the channel and get great stuff too, you know. So definitely let me know. I am me. And many of you have already bought them. Which, hey, what's up there? Yes. So, yes. So, the next uh, batch of inks are going out tomorrow. So, yes. Yeah. So, what happened was I had plenty of the light mixture and the medium mixture. But I had to make the dark mixture. And the dark mixture, uh, loving NIT all day. So, that is made today. So, that will ship out tomorrow. But you know what? I'm going to send always some really cool extras for you, which is going to be exciting. Anyone who has ever purchased from me, uh, always know that, uh, sorry I missed your question. I'm too busy uh, painting and talking, so thank you so much. So anyone who's ever purchased from me, I always give extra. Why do I give extra? Because I can, and I love to do it. So not only will you get inks, but you'll get some really something really cool that you could use uh, all day so uh, look for look 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 for that I just like giving extra that's kind of a, a thing and you know like why do I like giving extra because these days it's lucky we get what we pay for so I like to always uh, spoil you all always like you it's that's the one thing I mean it's more for me than anything else it's not like oh Tim's a great guy I like spoiling people I like uh, surprises giving surprises to people and uh, it just makes me feel good but always have patience for me because sometimes I fall behind and I might not get your stuff out right away so that that I'm guilty of but just have patience with me, you know, because I have classes and the live stream and uh, commissions and it kind of uh, not enough hours in the day. But that I'm working on. I'm working on getting much more uh, quicker with shipping. I just have to get more... Uh, how do I say more efficient with my time I have been going to bed earlier everybody and uh, so that's been making my days longer so it has been getting much better oh uh, thank you so much uh, uh, so really looking forward to hearing what you say uh, all day about about the inks and what I'm gonna do for you is I'm going to give you you'll be one of the 
first people who I'm going to put something extra in there that no one else has tried yet. So, so look forward to that. And speaking of uh, things that people haven't tried yet, pretty soon I'll be rolling out the uh, the sepia inks, the the light, medium, and dark mixture of the sepia, which will be a lot of fun. And so that's going to be, I believe, twenty twenty nine ninety five. But uh, you know they've been tested a long time and you won't have to mix the sepia you'll have the light medium and dark the only thing you'll have to worry about is creating good artwork and having fun yes uh so definitely uh don't worry, I'll take care of you. Next time you order, I'm going to draw in a lot of extras, Blue. So, don't worry about that. I'll take good care of you. Ah, oh, hey, Mr. Dredge. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Oh, wow. Thank you. And th that I, I really love. So, I really love when when uh, I get support like that makes me feel so great and thank you for you know spending your time with me and and just hanging out you know sepia work is a lot of fun to do isn't it sepia is it's interesting I remember one time I did a portrait of someone I went to high school with and it was of his wife and I was like I'll do it in full color and he's like no I want it in sepia and I'm like, really? He's like, nope. Sepia is how I want it. And you know what? It came out really great. And, you know, sometimes sepia is better than full color. When I come in with the dark mixture, I'm definitely going to uh, be able to uh, go ahead and define some of these areas a little bit more. And of course, we're going to keep that really beautiful hard edge here. But not so much where I'm going to be using any kind of shield or anything because it's not that hard of an edge. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, remove these hands. Wow, Blue, and oh, wow, and all day. Thank you so much, guys. That is really fantastic. Thank you. Wow, I really appreciate that. So, Blue and all day and, and Mr. Dredge, you guys have been just making my night. Thank you so much. That is so cool. And that's going to go right back into the channel. And, you know, maybe adding a camera or... Uh, you know, maybe, oh, speaking of that, here's something very interesting. So, one of our ink flingers, Juan Carlos, uh, went ahead and purchased a hat. And so that means that today there's going to be a hat giveaway. So I can't believe I forgot that. So he went ahead and did that. So... And I'm not going to ask anyone to do anything or anything like that. I just want to go ahead and give away. So I'm going to ask a question. And it's going to be a very interesting uh, art history question. Maybe Would that be fair art history question for uh, the hat giveaway? So let's see here. So let me go over here. So cool. So we're going to give a hat giveaway. It could be any color you want uh, within reason. <laughs> I think I have black. I have red. I have this color. I have olive. And I have blue. And if you already have a hat, no worries. 
You can purchase one of the gloves that are uh, customized. You can do that, or we can do a t-shirt. So, so no worry. So everyone's involved. Everyone could win something, even if you have it. So what I can do is uh, I'm going to give an interesting question, but I wanted to be fair. So uh, how can I do it where it's fair? So let's, uh, let's have some suggestions out there. Yeah, go out to dinner. That would be cool. <laughs> I had some Thai food the other day. I took it out. It was really great. Pad Thai was excellent. Just amazing. So, let's see. Who's buried in Grant's tomb? No, that's not it, you know, because everyone knows it's Napoleon. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Um, okay. Here's an artist, and uh, everyone should have heard about him. And uh, so this particular painter, so the first person who says his name wins it, right? So here we go. Yes, Blue is amazing. So this artist actually, uh, during his career, he had an aneurysm or an embolism and he became a quadriplegic so that's one thing he's still painting today he became a quadriplegic and uh, so that's one thing about this artist he's still painting today and he has a he's a realistic painter but he has a very uh, unique way of painting and he paints very large so who's the first person who could tell me who that is now, if no one gets them, I'll even, uh, I'll maybe show a piece of his artwork. Or we can go with somebody else. So, let's see. Uh, so, this is an artist. Oh, my interview with Drew Blair. Yes. Okay, Blue said Chuck Close. And that's exactly who it is. So, Blue, you do win. And uh, Blue, so, uh, I have your address. So you could get one of these really cool gloves or you could get a t-shirt. So you decide which one you would like. So uh, you can definitely uh, IM me or something like that. So was that a good way to uh, give it away? Is, is that okay or is it better just to draw? But the, you see the thing is when you do something like this, I can't blue, uh, draw all the names in a hat because some people don't want to comment and uh, you know normally uh, so I wouldn't be able to get everyone in time so that's pretty cool so congratulations to blue that's very exciting I'm excited so so okay so let's take a look and see where we are thus far with our painting so we have a very healthy stream tonight uh, 18 concurrent viewers which is wonderful uh, Oh, a question from my previous video. Oh, cool. So, let's see. Oh, I see. Oh, that would be cool. Like a question from... So, next time, I'm going to try and give uh, do giveaways almost every week. So, but let's thank uh, Mr. Juan Carlos Barrios uh, for, for that. That would be really fantastic, uh, you know, for donating the the giveaway today which is which is really cool really very cool of him so thank you for that Juan and let's see so I took away all the masking so you see I have a long way to go with that with, but at least it's catching up to everything else around it and that's what we want to do you know uh, Chuck had an aneurysm yes his art is amazing do you know that okay here's a quick thing did you guys know that early in his career he did black and white airbrushing? I thought that was fascinating, especially what we're doing uh, on this channel. Uh, yeah, he did black and white airbrushing, which was wild. And I also read that he has a rare condition where he does not remember people uh, remember people's faces, and so. Like, uh, you know, like, hey, we can remember, like, oh, I know that face, who he is, and we can recall. He has a rare condition where he has trouble with that. So that might be why he only paints faces. 
Yeah, I think it was on CBS this morning or something like that. I've seen that article. Uh, an interview which was really wild. Did you guys see his easel? It's like motorized and it goes around and it goes up and down, goes into the floor, which is really cool. Let's see. Uh, yes, cheers to one, Carlos, definitely. Uh, so, so love says all, uh, all day says all about marketing. <laughs> uh, yes, well, and you know, it's, it's cool. It, it makes, uh, makes it exciting to come to the live stream to do giveaways. It is a marketing thing, but it's also a way to give back too, which is great, you know? So it's a win-win situation. And so I got into making hats and t-shirts and customized gloves and because this is a way that I could you know help we all could help support the channel and get stuff for it but also give away stuff which is really fantastic uh, oh so you heard about him from that CBS this morning interview very cool with the uh, suffer from the face blindness and John says he has it too he's called old age <laughs> no I don't think so sir but yeah it's funny Hey Brad, how's it going? Good to see you. Better late than never, I always say. I'm so glad you're here. Uh, you just missed a giveaway, so that kind of kind of uh, is rough. Uh, but yeah, so blue one. Uh, she already has a hat, so she might get a T-shirt or something like that, you know. So Geiger was a thumb brush, a thumb air brusher. Holy cow, those guys are. I wouldn't say strange. I was going to say strange, so forgive me. Those guys are unique, I have to say. Uh, but, you know, those who have problems with their, you know, finger tendons and stuff, it might be cool to do that. But, oh my God, that's interesting, right? Uh, but, yeah. There's no right or wrong way to do things, I don't think. I think it's uh, pretty much whatever, whatever blows our hair back, right? Uh, so, but yeah, it is, it is alarming to see for the first time. If you haven't seen a thumb brush, uh, thumb air brusher, you're like, whoa, right? What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead with the medium mixture and I'm just going to enrich some of my darks and, uh, just sort of turn it up a notch, right? Is that Everill? Turn it up a notch. Oh, so uh, is my hand position awkward? That's interesting. It could be, but it's all about it's all about what's uh, what works for us. Whatever that is, right? Whatever that is. Yes, you know, it's interesting, uh, you know, when we get used to doing it a certain way, and especially if we weren't taught it wasn't wrong, you know, that it weren't taught that it was wrong, we just sort of adapt. So still with the medium mixture, when I go over with another layer, it, it does get darker because that's how the nature of transparency is that, you know, as you do one layer upon another, it does get darker progressively. <laughs> well, Nameless, I didn't say, the thing is, I didn't say it wasn't an open book test, right? So whoever was a quick draw to Google definitely but it was kind of an obscure question you know I mean I mean I didn't give too much away I only said that with the he became a paraplegic so she definitely had to have some head start of knowledge right now if I really wanted to go really deep I would have started talking about you know my neoclassical friends that would have been significantly more difficult because close is a uh, contemporary 
But who here knows about uh, let's see Mark Rothko who knows about Mark Rothko out there hey Mr. Todd how you doing good to see you I am working on that critique for you just give me a little time I I had to ship out a commission yesterday and so I had to make sure that I uh, I had to get that done so I will get that uh, that critique out to you no problem that's true not that's very true that's not true mr. mr. Kennedy your work is always very good and yeah you know have you guys seen that one airbrush the Aztec uh, Mr. David Morton used that all the time and he was one of my first airbrush teachers. I used to buy his videos and he was very gracious. We would talk on the phone and he would answer my airbrush questions which was really great and he used that airbrush and he basically didn't hold down the air and he pretty much just did bursts of air and uh, air and uh, paint at the same time and that worked for him. You know, that might even be uh, an advantage. I think it is advantage that your hands might be a, a little bit unsteady because uh, it keeps the nature of airbrush. If you're, if you're steady, you'll get organ uh, non-organic uh, lines and everything like that. So it is in your best interest to have that, you know, kind of shake, especially since you, you're doing fur, you know, a lot of your pet portraits. So I think that's in your best interest. So that's cool. Just doing that cast shadow over here. And over here, I'm going to do the crease between the two lips here. Is much darker than everything else right there and let's see if I can now that's kind of blurry so I'm just going to zoom in get the focus and then zoom back out there we go cool You know, the last I seen of Mr. Morton, I think he was doing real estate. Um, I haven't seen him paint in a while. He's really great. I love his stuff. But I don't think he's active, uh, at least on a public level. I hope he's painting, you know, you know, privately. That would always make me feel good, you know. And... So all day says his are unsteady, can't feel, oh, can't feel from your shoulders down. Oh my goodness, wow. So is, is, that, is that something that you looked into of why that happened uh, all day? And Airspace says I can really hammer down with fine details when need be, great. But still get, uh, you know, one of the great things about airbrush for those who are shaky uh, is that you want to have a lot less moving parts so let's say I'm over here right go over here okay so a lot of people will paint with their hands right so if you're shaky and you're going like this and you're painting with your hand yes you will have you have a lot of moving parts so you could have a lot of shakiness but I find and this is no secret most of your airbrush art teachers out there they basically will keep everything locked their shoulders locked their elbows locked their wrists locked even their fingers locked except for this finger of course and so when you're moving you're gonna go like this right you're just gonna you're just gonna move your hips and you're gonna go down like that and you're gonna go diagonally like that when I do that I am much more steady because there's less things moving everything is still in locked so there really could be a lot less shaking so try and do that right try and 
Uh, I'm sure you do that already, but you know, those who aren't as experienced as you, Bill, uh, try and do that because I think that would really help. It helps me because I like coffee. Sometimes I have three cups, but I really haven't. I only had two cups today, but I had the second cup at like two o'clock in the afternoon, but still, it was good. Uh, and let's say here, Steve, sa uh, Steve says, too bad he was everywhere for a while. He was, and he really helped out a lot of us, and he helped out me, and those, those videos were great, especially starting with airbrushing and he broke down I remember he broke down the female nude he did a large female nude video and he broke it down into three colors and that was really cool I think the colors were uh, what were the colors I think it was like a light red uh, like a burnt sienna and then the last color was like an umber and he used the createx the textile ones you know and it just came out so fantastic and he taught me how to use in that video how to use the electric eraser and the stencils to get the edges freehand shields he got mad at stencils so freehand shields he used these and so if you get a chance look up uh, David Morton he has them on there for free now so those of you who are new definitely check out those videos they'll be very very helpful yes locked very true so uh, nameless correct yes so true and uh, let's see it is the correct way to lock everything so you know as you get more advanced then yes as you get more advanced you can do stuff like like this you know you you know, I do it every day, all day, so I can paint like this, you know, only because I have all that, all those muscle memory and everything like that. But I don't, I don't recommend something like this to somebody who's, you know, new, but yeah, you definitely can, uh, definitely paint this way too, but only after a lot of experience. Isn't that what teachers say? Do as I do, not as I say? <laughs> or do as I say, not as I do, right? You know, I think fifth graders' work is actually some of the best work out there, you know? Uh, I think what I love about, you know, young people's art is that it doesn't have all the usual tricks. And I think that's worth the price of admission. I have an amazing uh, five-year-old student. She is just like so wonderful. And after I have my weekly class with her, I just get renewed of the love of art and why I started it in the first place. And so always, always remember that kids are, they're the best teachers on how to really enjoy painting. I really feel that way and here uh, so Mr. Uh, Kennedy says confidence of stroke and speed can make anyone do a straight line speed is definitely something that uh, is not talked about right when doing a straight line so it's a combination of getting that speed yes but also we have to ask ourselves you know uh, are we going to lose accuracy with that speed? So that's kind of a slippery slope too. For me, sometimes I can't do it so fast. I have to slow it down, you know. But definitely, speed does help. And just anything, any, any uh, medium is definitely, don't want to be tentative. You want to... You want to really believe it, you know, in what you're doing. And, you know, be forceful. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to quick put on the kettle because it's 1040, 1045. So I'm going to go ahead and put on the kettle. 
and it's just going to be a second. And of course, you all know it's going to be green tea, right? There's no uh, secret of what's gonna, what I'm going to be drinking, you know? Yeah, so Blue says it's great to start them young because they can teach us so much. Yes, Blue, tea time. That is definitely it. I think I'm going to do the matcha tea because I need a little bit of a pick-me-up, you know, with the uh, immune system a little bit. So definitely going to go with that. So still, I don't have, I'm going to actually come in with the dark mixture maybe this week or next week, and then things are going to really ramp up. <laughs> Whiskey. <laughs> Oh, Steve says, good t-shirt artists show how clean working fast can be. That is so true. Mr. Kent Lynn, that man is unbelievable. <whistles> Kent is incredible. Kent is one of the artists, when I first picked up an airbrush, I knew I wanted to do this medium because uh, just the control he had, or still has, even more so now, Hey, N.W., how you doing? I appreciate that so much. So, N.W., where are you from? So, I'm so happy to see you. So, All Day says I am on transmedium color. Now, what exactly is that? So, I'm not sure. Uh, oh, Minnesota. Great. How interesting, because we were just talking about Kent Lynn, and he's from Minnesota, and I think he's from the Wisconsin area, right by the Mall of America. Are you by the Mall of America, N.W.? Dan, how's it going? Good to see you, sir. So great. So that's wonderful. Now, Dan, if I'm not mistaken, you paint lures, is that correct? I remember, I think I remember seeing some of your lures. Now, if I'm wrong, uh, you know, beat me with a wet noodle or something. But I think I'm right. So let's see. Uh, Naval Subscriber says he goes live on Instagram a lot. Oh, he does. Wow. I do follow him. And I do like his work on Instagram. Oh, right. So, Dan, I got that right. So give me a, a so take away some of those demerits and give me a, I don't know, a, Give me a, a medal. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. So, uh, Mr. Uh, Kent Lynn, is he, is he Kent Lynn on Instagram as well? I think he is, if I'm not mistaken. No, he's air to be different. So, air, the number two, B is in Bravo, different. So, that's his name. Oh, look at that. So, uh, 30 minutes from the north. Oh, so you're like neighbors. That's great. And I have friends that are from Lacrosse. Do you go to Lacrosse often? That's not too far away. Dale, the airbrush guy? Hmm. That's interesting. So is Dale I don't think is Dale the airbrush guy that that's Kent Lind or that's a different guy? Must be a different guy, huh? Oh, all day you got booted. Not for me, my friend, so I'm glad you're back. Uh, TikTok, yeah, he's TikTok famous. That's great. Uh, Kent Lynn Lettering Boot Camp Online way back. So I went to Hobby Lobby about... I go there from time to time. Their selection is abysmal, but they do make great mats for you. They'll cut a mat to your specifications for $10. So that's good. But, you know, uh, in a pinch, if you need some color line paper, you can pick it up there. And also... I was there and I saw the video of Kent Lind 
uh, which was really cool. His instructional video, so that was really cool. Oh, a different guy does custom t-shirts. I'll definitely look him up. Thanks, Nameless. I appreciate that. So, Mr. Leahy, have you made a video that, that has been published out there? You know, like that, a DVD? I'm sure you did. Uh, but I, uh, I don't recall that, you know, which one. A couple of Dales. Oh, cool. Very cool. NW says, I think it's two hours away. You're 20 minutes, 25 minutes from Wisconsin border. Oh, cool. Now, uh, Mr. Diekman's from Wisconsin. So we have Wisconsin people in the house. We got Minnesota. Very cool. So, and also Colette's in Wisconsin. So we have quite a number of, never did a video, but wrote a book. Wow. So is that book uh, still in print? And uh, what is the name of that? Hey, uh, Mr. Uh, Rick, uh, you have to go. Oh, wow. So Rick, always a pleasure. And uh, thank you so much for stopping by, my friend. And I hope to hear from you soon. Definitely, definitely a, a very good member of the community. So thanks always for coming by, Mr. Rick. And Nayla subscriber says, Dale did an awesome Jurassic Park shirt not too long ago. Very cool. I, I did a video, uh, you know, I know they had Girls Gone Wild, and I did Starving Artists Go Hungry. Uh, it was a very short video, uh, you know, uh, didn't have a lot of film. But yeah, so I don't think it's in print anymore. So that's uh, Starving Artists Go Hungry. And uh, it was an independent uh, filmmaker. It's very, uh, very rare. And we're just going to continue darkening up. So I have to make sure that I get these large shapes, right? And we're just going to pull this out. So Steve says how airbrushes work. The publisher was sold, but it's still being printed. Amazon is the best place to get it. Wow, so let me write that down. I'm going to write it down in Spanish. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, let's see, so how airbrushes work. So let me see my Spanish, and I would be como funcionan uh, los aerográficos? Would that how you would say it? How would you say that in Spanish? How airbrushes work? So how airbrushes work? And uh, so I am going to look that up, and I'm going to try and purchase it. Now, would it be? Do you have them in stock? You know, you have a bunch of copies. If they do, could they purchase them on your website, Mr. Lady? Because I'd rather give you all the money than give Amazon the money. <laughs> so <laughs> all they says they spit up. They could, that's for sure. Air in, paint out, right? The book is only two. I use two pages. <laughs> that's something. I, I should make you know how to make matcha tea while live streaming. So that's going to be my book. It's going to be by Pendant Publishing, and uh, I think that's going to be about fourteen pages, and it's just going to have pictures, no words. Uh, so the airspace says, when Gerald says Radu's book was the first airbrushing book I could not even imagine. Yeah, not much on the topic. So we're in the uh, early stages of all this. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, let's see if I can, a little more interesting uh, picture here. And let me put some color here. I'm going to go ahead and make my tea. Keep the conversation going. So 
it would be, it would help if I had my cup. The sad thing is, the most exciting part of my live stream is when I go make tea. So that wasn't too bad. So today's part of the live stream is brought to you by Twinings. Twinings Irish breakfast tea. Let's see if I could show you a picture. Yes, Twinings of London. 100% pure black tea, Irish breakfast. And it's brought to you by, actually it's not. I just wanted to go ahead and show off the tea that I'm using. But maybe how Twinings can go ahead and and uh, sponsor the live stream, right? That would be great. Great for Twinings and great for us. So, uh, so let's see. So the Empress has told his wife uh, uh, that you're a professional artist, darn it, and you can afford a little $30 easel to paint on. Well, definitely. You definitely need a good easel. That's one of the main things. Remember, uh, I know you know this, uh, but the thing is, an easel is something that you want to buy only once and always uh, make it an investment like a couch, you know. So I'm going to uh, remove this camera and see if I can show you my easel. And so right here. So yeah, an easel is something that you want to buy only once. So let's see, I'm gonna go to the other camera. Okay, so here's my easel. And I purchased this in 2001. And this is called like an H-frame. And it's really good, it goes much higher, but my, my ceiling only goes so high. But yeah, so you only really wanna purchase uh, your easel only once. Get a really good one and you won't have to purchase another one. Unless you have a school and you want to have, you know, for students and whatnot. But definitely, uh, that's something that uh, you only want to purchase once. So when you can, or for Christmas, make sure you tell Santa or Hanukkah Harry uh, that you, you definitely want an easel. And a good one. About $150 and up is the price. The more you spend, the better it is. Right? Uh, yeah, you know, the cheap ones end up breaking anyway. Hey, Todd, I'm glad you're back. Okay. So, let's see. Black tea is a little stronger than green tea. 
but in a different way and I really love that it's really fantastic and see that's funny I went to go get tea and my concurrent viewers went up interesting so here's an idea I want to throw at you and I know it's a crazy idea but it comes from me so it normally is crazy what do you guys think of of me just keeping the live stream going one day like keeping it going like 24 hours like from Saturday from like 6 in the morning to let's say 8 o'clock and 9 o'clock at night when I go to bed what do you guys think of that guys and girls think of that I mean I'm gonna be painting during the day you know going in and out I mean I'll, I'll go ahead and answer questions while I'm here I'll go get lunch I'll go to the supermarket come back uh, and just do like a live stream such as that what do you guys think would that be something interesting or something just too ridiculous but uh, you will see the normal work day that I'm doing I'm just trying to think of an experiment just a 24-hour live stream and you know now it's gonna be very boring because I live alone you might get an occasional cat cat sighting but that will be it the day in life of Tim definitely I mean you know if you if you're having trouble you want to take a nap you just go ahead put that on the iPad and uh, yes that's right commercial free Tim <laughs> so uh, yes the day in the life of Tim vision brought to you by Tim America you know so I think I'm gonna do that that's gonna be an experiment and you know what it might it might be totally ridiculous yes I do have to make sure so here's a funny story and I know you guys know this uh, the day I had my first uh, my first COVID shot and I was feeling good I had it at 12 o'clock and I was feeling great with the uh, the shot I'm like this isn't affecting me at all and then like towards the, the last hour like where we are now started sweating bullets Tim Ross <laughs> And, uh, yes, exactly. So the nameless uh, subscriber, yes. So basically, uh, I started getting sweaty, like started pouring sweat. And uh, so that was around this time. And then I was telling everyone, yeah, I'm feeling kind of under the weather. I should stop. And everyone's like, just get your rest. I'm like, no, I'm going to do the live stream. So when I went ahead and I said goodbye to everybody I forgot to turn it off and so I was watching TV of course I had the COVID shot I was watching about the Moderna vaccine and uh, I was watching TV and it's crazy you know I you know when you're alone you don't know you take your shirt off and whatever thank God I didn't uh, walk in front of the camera so I'm flipping through YouTube and I'm looking at my channel and it says you're live and I'm like oh my god I'm live for like 10 minutes I was live streamed and I didn't know about it and you know what I actually had a more successful live stream <laughs> when I was watching TV than when I was painting earlier so that's pretty funny uh, take care Bill thanks so much for hanging around I really appreciate it and I know that studio is gonna come out amazing and um, so, uh, Mr. Uh, Kennedy, check out his uh, YouTube channel. It's called The Airspace. And he just did a really cool video uh, on making your, your compressor quieter. And I thought that was a very needed one. So, thank you so much. And uh, everyone, check it out. The Airspace. You can just click on his, uh, his icon. That will take you right to his channel. So, very cool. Can you? I think so. Yeah, I did forget it. It was, it was scary, right? I was like, thank God. I mean, did I walk in front of the camera? Did I say something, you know? And good thing I'm currently single because that could have turned into 
a rather interesting live stream, you know? That's for sure. The first airbrush artist to be banned from YouTube. That would have been terrible. Hey John, have a great night. Thank you so much, Mr. Diekman, for hanging out. I appreciate it. And uh, and I'm looking forward to seeing uh, some of more of your work that you're doing. And I really enjoy your stuff, uh, Mr. Diekman. But yeah, you just never know, you know. And Mr. Leahy does live streams. <coughs> so Steve, what was the weirdest live stream that you did? I mean, the weirdest thing happened to you live. Uh, my weirdest thing is a light fell on me. That was probably the second weirdest thing next to not turning the live stream off. So blue, you can also, there's another thing that you can get instead of the hat, since you already have a hat, or you can get a different color hat. So you could get uh, an Ink Flingers mug, and you can have it personalized, uh, which is really cool. So that could be something. So you got a lot of choices of what you could win, which is cool. Yeah, so Mr. Leahy is thinking about what was this, the weirdest thing that happened on live stream because you just never know. It's live. Anything could happen. And let's come in with the light mixture and just darken this area right here. And lower that air pressure a little bit. See when I lower that air pressure it seems like I have much better control because if the air pressure is too high and it's diluted it just will just give you problems. Dan says he's never going live. That's funny. Shirt in medium to match the hat. Great. So I'm definitely going to order you a blue shirt. And we're going to go ahead and match it. And I believe you got... What color did you put on that? Was that, was that black or white that you put on the color of that hat? Oh, there's a, there's a Modelo beer commercial with a guy airbrushing? That is really fantastic. Yeah, airbrush, you know, live could really, you know, you just never know. You're always taking a chance. But I think those of us who, who live this uh, live stream life, who do it, you know, regularly, we're kind of... Uh, we're shy on a one, I'm very shy on a one-to-one, -one, but in a group setting like this, I'm not shy at all, you know? So it's interesting, you know, we're kind of like a special breed, those who go live, because a lot of stars won't go live, you know? Because it's, uh, it's risky. Black, okay, cool. So that's exciting, definitely. Oh, this black tea by Twining, the Irish breakfast tea, is really fantastic. So those executives at Twining just realized that I'm enjoying your tea 
and this is going out to 14 people so look at the advertising uh, payoff you would get for sponsoring this channel and let's see yeah definitely I'm very shy one-on-one -on -one blue and even like so let's say if I go to a party I feel so awkward at a party and uh, but this stuff but I've always been like that whenever I was ever on a stage it was just like I just felt so much more comfortable there than I do you know on that one-to-one one-on-one -one, one -on -one thing you know yes did I mention Twinings, the Irish breakfast tea of champions? So uh, let's get those sponsors. Let's uh, all contact Twinings. Be the first, uh, the first uh, airbrush live stream to be sponsored by, you know, the London tea makers. And Steve says he can't think of anything too crazy. What about when you did you stab yourself once? Is that correct? I believe I remember that. Or was that someone else? Or did you stab someone else? <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> no, Steve did not stab anybody, just for the record. I think if I had a full house of people, then things could really get interesting. But with just me, it kind of limits the, uh, you know, the risk factor, you know. Uh, the guy standing in the corner watching everyone uh, else have fun. Yeah, exactly. Sometimes I would be sketching them. That's one thing I used to do at parties. I used to bring my sketch pad and I started sketching people and that always broke the ice. And, uh, you know, then then I kind of came out of my shell because, you know, a lot of people, it, you know, there's a lot of attention. I do quick sketches of the, the pretty young ladies and uh, that that always helped. You know, anything I could do to help over the years, definitely. Uh, so that that was really good. So my art has really opened doors a lot of, you know, in a lot of the awkward times of my life. In awkward situations. Groovy music. Wow. That's the one thing about live streams is that I wish I could have some good music. But, you know, it always gets messed up with the copyright. They'll turn off my my live stream so no music you know and I can't even hum something because they'll be like oh, copyright strike so we got to be careful oh my god there was a night that that Steve was was uh, was cussing oh my god so tell me about that we have to hear about this <laughs> go let let the cat out of the bag not that the cat should ever be in the bag uh, but you know yeah, so let's hear about that. That's interesting. Ooh, let's go ahead and darken these lips with the light mixture. And this way we have something to contrast when we come in with the... with the eraser. So that's good. Gotta put some... Let's see, uh, Dan says, he was asking about guitar to learn. Oh, okay, so, uh, so Dan, uh, so, uh, so were you asking Steve about a guitar? Yes, Blue Meow. <laughs> so Nameless says, when you speak of YouTube overlords, lest you get banned, true, you got to be careful, you know? Uh, oh, Guitar Zone. Oh, okay. So you musicians out there, I always admire you. You guys and girls are great. I always wanted to learn, but never had the opportunity. It's all well, because I know I can't serve two masters, so I have to stick with painting and drawing. I want to become excellent at it. So for me, not that other people can't do other things more than one thing. I just can't. I'm not a good multitasker. So I wouldn't be a multivitamin. I would be more like, uh, you know, 
B12 complex or something like that. So I would be one of those vitamins that, you know, would just be for vitamin C and that's it. I wouldn't be a multivitamin because I can't do more than one thing. I try and I had a job in corporate and they wanted me to do 12 things. And I was like, there's no way I could do 12 things. I can do one thing really well and really be up there with the best of the best if you give me one thing to master. But 12 things? I'm sorry. Just Tim doesn't do that, you know? I just can't do that. Now, I can do several things that have an ultimate goal, an ultimate result that I can do, like chess, but I can't think of, you know, totally different things. Like, to me, it's like, you know, those guys who juggle all the plates, you know, I can't do that. Oh, Dan wants to know if there's someone to learn from YouTube. That's a good question. So I know there's people here who might be uh, really good. Uh, what I would do, Dan, and you know, this is another thing. The size of someone's subscriber rate is not an indication of how good of a teacher they are or how good the video is. So don't go by this, the number. Just con continue moving around. Just look for different uh, topics on guitar classes and you'll find exactly what you're looking for. It may take some time. But definitely don't jo don't go just by subscriber count because that could be misleading. Oh, look at that! Colette knows Steve Shine, Dan Marty. Look at that! So look, so yes, I know that John is a guitarist, and uh, Colette's a guitarist, and uh, Air Todd says that Mike's brush. He's a guitarist. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, I I really I love the mathematical qualities of of music, you know, uh, you know. So I would be interested in that if I ever got into if I ever got into music. I definitely would be like a classical classical like you know Beethoven and uh, stuff like that. Classical Spanish guitar. I would definitely go in that direction. But alas, painting is a jealous mistress, so I do not have the ability or the time to go ahead and do that stuff for me. Oh, so he's not, oh, okay, you were just talking about airbrush, okay, cool. Uh, so yeah, everyone was like, Mike's brush does airbrush, um, does guitar. So everyone was surprised. Man, look at that! It's eleven eighteen. You know, this has been like a real informal live stream. I'm just kind of chilling, you know, and uh, just hanging out. It's more like a hangout live stream. Uh, didn't talk too much about airbrushing, but not every live stream is going to be the same. Some are going to be just chilling, you know, which is cool. And talking to you guys and girls, right? So that's cool. So Steve Shine, he must be pretty good, huh? No matter what you want to learn, it's on YouTube. Even airbrushing in sepia. Gonna bring this down here. And let's scrape that off. Notice I didn't use my finger but my glove. Okay. And so now what we're gonna do is we are going to start adding some of the white pastel here and let's see how that goes right so let me get my now all the supplies are on my website paintedglyphs.com and uh, so you can definitely purchase the pastel I use the brushes the uh, the inks everything so what I usually do, I don't usually do that way, but I'll go ahead and use my stump, a paper stump or tortillan. 
and you can see the white pastel does work well now it's going to work better on the uh, Canson paper uh, there's a really nice uh, yellow Canson paper that I use uh, with this so let me show you what the yellow looks like I don't know if I have it here or is it in the other studio actually it's no longer the other studio it has become my I reclaimed my bedroom let's see I'm gonna be right back I'm gonna go get the uh, the one I'm working in sepia and yellow Okay, if it's not there, it's here somewhere, and it's probably over here. Aha! I think I found it, yes. So those of you who didn't leave yet, this is uh, the painting I'm doing on the yellow paper. And as you can see how it's a little bit different, uh, let me move my microphone out of the way here, and then I'll just darken it a bit. So that's how it would work on the yellow paper, which is very, very interesting. And that's the sepia on the yellow paper. This is just with the light mixture, and so you can see that just like before, I come in with the white first, with the white mixture, and then I lightly come in with the uh, the white mixture first, and then lightly come in with the with the light mixture, the sepia. So you see, this way is much more of an emotional way to paint. You know, more like a Rembrandt kind of thing. And this is more of a controlled, like a neoclassical painter, like Angra or Jacques Louis David. So it's good because there's different ways to approach the sepia. You know. Oh, thanks, Steve. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. And uh, so the yellow is very interesting. So uh, definitely, if you guys can't find it, uh, I do sell it on paintedglyphs.com, five sheets for five dollars. Already pre-cut to eight and a half by eleven. So yeah, I I am liking, and this is on Bristol, which you know I kind of did it on really fast because the uh, yellow paper didn't come so you know the show must go on and all that stuff so that's why I pretty much went with the uh, Bristol but I won't do Bristol again because you know I'm not saying it's not doable I'm just saying that it's not optimal so 
it's good to work on a, on a surface that you know isn't perfect because then you you're kind of forced to be more you know painting on the fly and problem solving which are all good to do you don't want to be too comfortable when you're working all the time sometimes you want to rock the boat Nameless says getting anxious waiting for Tim to return like a <laughs> I appreciate that Nameless I do yeah I was looking in the uh, bedroom where I have all my files of all my students and different projects I like to keep everything in the middle of the file I realize it's over here so my studio is getting a little crazy that happens I'm sure does it happen with everyone out there that the studio gets a little crazy let me see if I can just do a little 360 of my studio and uh, and mr. Steve if you find if you see that uh, that Vermeer that's lost from the Stewart Garden Museum uh, pretend you haven't seen it so let's see here so let's see we have you know the beautiful uh, curtain there which is a sheet and you look see how my desk is here it's getting really nuts you know so I have to fix that and you know look at that little guy I got there he's really fantastic so I am ashamed of this yet I'm gonna go ahead and uh, admit I have a problem so not tomorrow probably on Saturday I'm gonna start fixing it up oh here's a print that I just did uh, of curls that you seen. remember curls so you can see this print I got fingerprints on it but this is on an aluminum panel so those of you who remember curls uh, curls this is the uh, the uh, print is eight and a half by uh, it's eight by ten and if you're interested I'm selling them for forty nine dollars and ninety five cents eight by ten but I am also selling five by seven for twenty nine ninety five which isn't bad isn't bad again just ways that you can support the channel and get really cool stuff at the same time so pretty cool so right now it's eleven 27 so so now you see my you know my uh, my secret of a crazy studio next week I'm going to show you how clean I actually made the studio or I'll have an excuse why I didn't do it so stay tuned for that is it going to be an excuse or did I actually clean my studio up that's the question so and right there my cat got me so that's interesting all right so let's continue with uh, using the white pastel and you can see the white pastel works even on the bristol now it's white bristol and you might say well how does that but the thing is over the time we're working we're actually covering it with tone from from the sepia and right here we have some, some glass of light here. Let's let's go ahead and see when we see that in our hand here. We have a nice glass of light right over here. We'll put that in. Yeah, so uh, Colette says, do you blend the white pastel? Definitely. I actually rub it into the surface, you know, a lot of times too. And so that's really cool. Uh, Blue says, that should be your question for next week's giveaway. So the question is, uh, what is this, uh, you know, about my studio? That would be good. Or I could be like, who's buried in Grant's tomb? So, Brad, have a great night. Good to see you. Yeah, you know, I'm ashamed of that mess, but I'm going to definitely, definitely fix it up, you know? I'm just a bad example, you know? I, I definitely have to fix that. But that's one of the things that I've been doing. I want to be held accountable for my crazy studio. So, that's uh, kind of a therapeutic thing I just did there. But those of you who also have uh, crazy studios out there, you don't have to feel like you're alone either. 
Todd, have a great night. Always a pleasure, sir. Thank you so much for hanging out. So we are at 11.30, and 11.30 means that we have to uh, say so long. Thank you so much for hanging out. I really appreciate everybody. A lot more than you know, because, you know, nothing goes on around here. So this is it. So thank you so much for making my Wednesday night really great. Thank you so much for the Super Chats. I really appreciate that. That is like so exciting I just want you to know that just extremely exciting and I'm so thankful uh, so thank you so much blue thank you so much mr. dredge and thank you so much all day I really appreciate it and uh, and that kind of support really is like a tonic a shot in the arm so everyone have a great night take care of yourselves and I will see you with a clean studio next week and like every week, where is that off button?